open up a tab, grab a seat, and pour a pint. It's time for the Beer Guys Radio Show. You want free beer? Go to the brewery. Dedicated to the art, science, and enjoyment of craft beer. Yeah, what's wrong with the beer we got? Now, here are your hosts, Tim Dennis and Aaron Williams. And welcome to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We are radio for the local craft beer movement, broadcasting live from Pontoon Brewing Company in Sandy Springs, Georgia. And I'm Aaron Williams. And I'm Tim Dennis. We've got Brian and Becky on assignment this week. Yes. Out there having a good time. So this week we are talking to one of Georgia's newest breweries, as Aaron mentioned, we're at Pontoon Brewing in Sandy Springs. Yeah, definitely. So we've got uh, Sean O'Keefe, uh, the CEO and co-owner with us, and also Cole Brown, uh, NASCAR driver and brewmaster. Uh, not re- <laughs> Maybe the right. latter, not the former. At least half of that is true. Exactly, right. exactly. Absolutely. So Again, gents, thanks so much for joining us today. We appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for coming out and trying our beers. Oh, you got it, man. We, we, that's We're what enjoying we do it. Best. I'm sipping, uh, <laughs> sipping. Don't haze me, bro, right now, which is being released today. <laughs> Correct. Correct. So, uh, released now. It's yeah. a hazy IPA. And it's got kind of, as we were talking about a little earlier, it's a little hybrid, a little west, a little east in this one, right? Correct, correct. Um, you know, the, a lot of our beers are, it's an evolution. Um, good beer is all about evolution, and so uh, we're going to tweak it a little bit here and there. Uh, really happy with the product. Uh, it, it really, the aroma on it is banging, so uh, I'm pretty happy with it. But, yeah, it, it is. It, it's got kind of the, you know, it's still got some, like, pine uh, a little bit to it. Um, it's not as, like, sweet as you typically would would you know, think of, of a New England style IPA, but that's why we kind of like it too. Um, yeah, good stuff. Yeah, definitely. So we're looking forward to drinking more of that and uh, talking more with uh, Sean and Cole about uh, their brews that they've got here in Pontoon Brewing. But uh, speaking of brews, uh, Tim, you've got a you had a pretty good uh, week. Uh, I had so a pretty far. good week. I did yeah, okay too. I had a pretty so, good week. So yeah. yeah, did some running around last Saturday. Of course, was Georgia Beer Day, big holiday here in Georgia. So I went out to some of Georgia's breweries. And I stopped by Monday Night's Garage. They released a beer called Beyond the Clouds Mm -hmm. that is a Brett IPA. It's phenomenal. And, Aaron, I got to try Okonomiyaki. Oh, yeah. It's great, isn't it? Well, you know, it is. And my first experience with it was not pleasant. It was overly fishy and unenjoyable. So I was hesitant to try it again. But I said, you know what? I'm going to give this a shot one more time. And it was fantastic. They even made a special one to pair with that bread IPA. Yeah, they so did. I and, that uh, yeah. Out, so, so I know that the person who made the Okonomiyaki is named Harume. And uh, so she's okay. like straight from Japan. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's legit Very stuff. Very cool. It was good. Awesome. Yeah. Also went by Sweetwater's Woodlands. They released Cambium, which is a beer they'd had on draft that I really love. They released the latest Woodlands Circle beer, which is their members only beer. Mm-hmm. And then I uh, stopped by a friend's house for a little bottle share and uh, brew day. So, brewed oh, up you, a porter. You brewed something. Excellent. I did, it's yeah. First while. time in a, in a minute. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. Aaron, so. We did a vanilla porter. Oh, nice. Sounds good. Yeah, how about you? Yeah, so I went to uh, the Southbound. Had a uh, went to the Georgia Beer Garden. They had a Meet the Brewer event there. Uh, Barrel Age Transilience was on, which uh, they also had. Uh, it was a current, and uh, I believe Passion Fruit was also in that, too. So it was a really nice uh, a, a Berliner Weiss that they've got. Uh, again, very, very fruity, very nice. One of my one of my favorite beers they do make is that Transilience. Uh, they also had a stout. So they took the stout that they had uh, that they usually use for Moonlight Drive, which is their coffee stout, but they put it. Not on coffee, but they put it in Laphroaig ba- barrels. Okay. Holy mackerel. If you like Laphroaig, I mean, that's, and I know that's kind of a, a controversial. L- yes, yeah. You know, you either like it or you hate it, but it was peaty, it was smoky, you know, it was. Laphroaig it was, is intense. It I is. I mean, even absolutely. if you like peaty scotches, it's extremely, extremely intense. And I, f- I always forget the word for that specific type of peat, but it's, uh, it's coastal. And yeah. And it gets almost a. Uh, mercurial kind of taste it, it's it. very interesting so. almost a medis- med- medicinal right, type of thing right. to it pungent yeah. very pungent there you go pungent that's a good yes. word for it so so yeah had that and also uh had uh, some uh, beers from catawba the the clt that they've got also their hops hopness monster so a couple of ipas there so uh pretty good week you know for georgia beer good day stuff, georgia man. beer weekend good times good stuff well, let's check out this week's truck and taps beers of the week <laughs> crack open the cold one it's the truck and tap beer of the week <laughs> Craft beer and food trucks in downtown Woodstock. Truckandtap.com. And what do we got on the on the menu here this week, Tim? So our top spot, of course, is going to our friends here at Pontoon Brewing. 
and we're going to be drinking a little more of this Don't Haze Me, bro. We have a sample here of one that uh, is giving you a little trouble right now, right? Just a little bit. There's so, a lot of stuff in there. Yeah, so we got <laughs> Breakfast Squall, which I know is their uh, their Squall. What's uh, what the uh, Russian Imperial style? The with Russian Poblano Imperial style with right. poblanos. Yep. Okay. And then we've got some coffee and maple in this one, too, right? Coffee, maple, and vanilla. Correct. Okay, good stuff. What else are we going to get into from Pontoon today? Um, well, uh, we've got a uh, – our, our, we're going to be doing a lot of shandies. Um, it's really not a like your traditional shandy. It's really a Hefeweizen with juice in it. It's not very overly sweet. Uh, it allows the beer to show through, really good aromas. But at the end of the day, it's still a beer. Um, and so we've got a couple different variations. We've got the uh, – Surf Rock Candy Shanty, which we did with a band called Repeat Repeat. Um, they came down and we collaborated with them. And uh, that has mango and pineapple on it. And then we took that beer and we put it on watermelon, cantaloupe, and honeydew. And we call it Melon Ball. Uh, someone came up with a funny name, Melon Bala, which we'll probably Bala. Add a ball. Okay. Shot caller. Yes, yes, right. <laughs> uh, that would be RJ, our social media and, uh, uh, marketing coordinator. So awesome. that's what she does. Um, but so we got those two on, and then um, yeah, we got Fresh Galaxy in. It is okay. two days okay. old. All right. Uh, so it's, it's just a wee baby. Uh, and then we might break out the Bromosa. Uh, All right. It's a, uh, you know, okay. a lot of. Uh, That's a good one. I yeah, enjoy that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, half of our flotation device, half of our. Uh, surf Rock Candy Shandy, a little bit of orange juice. So. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. And, Aaron, you've got one from our friends over at Trim Tab that we may get into, correct? Yeah, Language they- of Thunder. Uh, it's a Cumulus version, which is uh, their coffee vanilla uh, variant. And uh, it's it, the, be- the bottle is absolutely beautiful. That's uh, one of the pe- most uh, beautiful bottles I've seen. So I'm looking forward to tasting what's in it. I've heard great things. So. Sounds good to me. Yeah, Lots definitely. of good choices today. And now let's check out this week's headlines. What's in the news? The beer guys have the scoop. Extra, extra, read all about it. Time for headlines. Brian is off today. He's on assignment, as we just said. So he usually does the news. But I did it a long time ago, before P- pre-Brian, PB. Yes. And so I'm going to go ahead and take over for him today. Uh, yeah, the first thing in the news is that we've got a brand new Hop City coming. And that's going to be at Westside's Lee and White Development, uh, right next to uh, Muddy Night's Garage. So uh, looks like they're going to be opening uh, sometime later on this year in the fall. And uh, it's going to be really uh, almost another craft beer uh, portion of that Lee and White development that's really starting to uh, to see some craft beer boundaries right there on the Beltline. That'll be good. Uh, we've got to also, of course, uh, ASW Distilling is going to be there. Uh, we're also going to see uh, Wild Heaven and uh, Banyan Roots. Uh, yeah, lots there. going on so in that lots development. Going on in that development. Uh, should be fun. Uh, also, uh, interesting thing uh, that we just heard as well, Systex St. Stainless Works. Um, basically, they were almost uh, um, a, a rental-to-own leasing company for brewers, brewers to, to brew their equipment. Well, they defaulted, and Rome City Brewing Company won a case uh, against them for, I believe it was almost $500,000 because of, of the, uh, the issues they had, because they basically didn't deliver on what they promised. Right. They had uh, promised that basically they're going to deliver uh, the stainless steel American-made uh, you know, fermenters, barrels, all the things that you need to start up a brewery. But if they've got anything delivered at all, they basically turned out to be cheaply made, for lack of a better term, pieces of junk. And or they just got nothing. Or they got nothing, so, exactly. Yeah. So a uh, big Ponzi scheme really affected a lot of folks because, you know, when you default, I mean, it hurts every business, but especially a very small business that's just starting to, to start up that doesn't have a lot of capital to work with. And when you're talking about somebody who doesn't deliver on the actual means of production, that's going to kill them right there. Yeah, There's nothing and that's I know Rome City Brewery had put like a fifty five thousand dollar cash deposit down. They got some, uh, you know, punitive damages on that, but uh, yeah. it hurts a small business a lot when that happens. Oh, it definitely does. So this one doesn't hurt. This one I like, and I'm interested about this too. Someone has created a scratch and sniff beer book. You know, so, I have a theory on how that happened. Okay, so how did that happen? Someone's reading a book and they spilled a beer on it. And this a light bulb just just flashed. Oh, I think they're like I could, I could market this. Here's I the porter. This. Exactly. Yes. I think that's a, that's a good call. So so there you go. And uh, then we've also got uh, another thing. Uh, last thing I want to talk about here in the news. Uh, basically, that uh, Brewdog beats Elvis Presley's estate in court over appeal over a beer name. Uh, you know, this is back in the UK. But uh, the cool thing about that though is that they're offering free beer to anyone visiting Brewdog dressed as Elvis. So if you've got any white jumpsuits in your closet. No. I do. Of you course do. Oh, I do. I just, of look, course I, I do. I'd assumed so. I just wanted to make yeah. sure that you had some. My rhinestone is actually in the shop, so um, so we're going to dress up, go to Brew Dog in Ohio, and uh, get some free beer. Sounds good that to sounds me. That sounds like a plan. Exactly. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to take a quick break right now. You'll listen to the Beer Guys Radio Show, beerguysradio.com. We'll be back talking to Pontoon Brewery out of Sandy Springs, Sean O'Keefe and Cole Brown will be with us. 
We'll be back right after this. Craft beer forged with a reverence for tradition and new styles that start a revolution. Ironmonger Brewing. The brewers at Ironmonger pride themselves in being masters of barrel-aged, hoppy, and sour beers. They invite you to their tap room to taste and see. And coming soon, Ironmonger's Barrel Room featuring live entertainment. Keep up to date on all things Ironmonger by liking them on Facebook. Ironmonger Brewing, establishing a new standard in craft beer. Have you ever thought about owning your own brewery, but don't know what it takes to get one built? We're CRL Contracting, and we build breweries. We are the most experienced contractors in the state of Georgia when it comes to building new breweries and tap rooms, or expanding current breweries. If you've been to Orpheus, Second Self, or Scofflaw, then you know what kind of work we can do. Just give us a call at 678-546-3382, or visit crlcontracting.com for more information. CRL Contracting. We build breweries. CRLcontracting.com. Follow the Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The numbers all go to 11. Does that mean it's louder? Well, it's one louder. Now, back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. And welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. Check us out at BeerGuysRadio.com. We are broadcasting live from the Pontoon Brewing Tap Room in Sandy Springs, Georgia. And we have Sean O'Keefe and Cole Brown with us here today. Guys, thanks again for joining us. We appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for coming out. And we're uh, Absolutely. We're excited to talk some beer. Yeah. Cool. You guys have been open uh, fairly new. You are Sandy Springs' newest slash first brewery <laughs> bingo yep so how's it been so far uh it's been we we've got a really good reception so far from people uh we get a lot of people that come in and just are excited to have a brewery in their backyard a couple of people that are within walking distance i see a couple of regulars here today and um it's uh we're starting to start to get busier on weekends uh saturdays we're getting you know two to three uh one weekend 400 people coming through uh, so it's it's nice. It's nice to see uh, we're running out a lot of beers, uh, which is a good thing. I'm starting to learn. Yeah, yeah, awesome. So that's uh, Sean. What's uh, what's your craft beer story, man? How did you get involved with craft beer? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I my my parents were over yeah. in uh, in Germany and uh, had some um, had some uh, I had some exposure to some really good German beers back in the day mm -hmm. and uh, you know for summers uh, when I was in college I would go back home to uh, Carolina Blonde up in North Carolina and I was cleaning kegs I was doing all the grunt work up there they helped me build my first system and uh, started home brewing and just fell in love with it uh, so yeah very, Very cool. cool. Yeah, so did you uh, uh, really kind of catch the bug early, or did you just, uh, you know, because, again, cleaning kegs, doing that all that kind of stuff, starting at the bottom, that's, that's, <laughs> that's not very glamorous uh, as you speak, right? It's, it's not glamorous, but it's just the environment itself. I mean, yeah. anybody, you know, you guys see it every day, and, and anybody in the industry will tell you, like, even the, the, the crappy stuff is, is still cooler than anybody else's stuff. Uh, so, I mean, even then, I mean, they're sitting there telling me this crazy over my head, chemistry of beer and uh, i'm still learning cole teaches me all the time uh just you know stuff that i don't know and so it's just kind of this uh balance between education and just being in a cool industry so cool. yeah now, cole how did you get uh, involved with craft beer um i kind of started as a foodie um and then got into just like liquor in college and bought a keg think i could fill it it's corny keg couldn't get it exchanged decided to homebrew decided i wanted to do that Okay. Um, started competing in competitions. Wait, you became a liquor fan in college? Yeah. <laughs> that never happened. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's so. awesome. So, so cool. Very, uh, you know, um, you guys, uh, before you opened this up, uh, you were uh, basically a uh, uh, contract brewing. Correct. Um, tell, for those who don't know what contract brewing, can you tell us a little bit about how that works? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it goes by a couple names, Nomad Brewing, Contract Brewing. Basically what it is, you know, cutting it down to what it really is, is we send our recipes over to another brewery. And uh, they brew it for us, and our distributor picks it up. Um, you know, some I, I went up to Thomas Creek a couple times and brewed with them on their system. I went over to Coastal Empire, who was most recently brewing with uh, uh, we brewed with, and then Second Self as well. Uh, mm -hmm. 
So, uh, yeah, we give the recipes. They, you know, either we brew it with them or they brew it, and that's that's it. So so how did you like that process? Because I know, now you've mentioned a few breweries that, uh, you know, that we know and enjoy, but you really lose control of your process when you have someone else doing that. A- you know, so. yep. Cole's nodding you. Yep, very yep. much. So, yeah. Absolutely. It sucks. I mean, it, it, I, I'll be completely honest. It uh, Contract brewing is, you know, you get your name out there. That's great. But it, it's really hard. And, and there are so many little variables that it just takes one of those to, to have a bad product. And Coastal Empire and Second Self have done a tremendous job with our beer. Our quality shot through the roof after we left from Thomas Creek. And uh, a lot of it was because they don't have a bunch of clients that they were doing it for they really focused on our beer which we really appreciated and we work with those guys and um you know they've done a fantastic job now one of your uh, mottos is shades on and bottoms up so what does that mean to you guys it's it's one of those stupid slogans that just fit you know it was uh you know we get a lot, a lot of people that ask like why pontoon boats why otters but um, you know, just imagine yourself like on a lake, not going anywhere fast, just hanging out, shade, you know, got shades on. And uh, I actually, I like chugging beer. Uh, I know a lot of people don't like chugging on ABC and Beer Label Society and whatnot. Uh, so I like to slam a beer down. In fact, I, I challenge anybody out there to out shotgun me. Uh, I, I will I will take on that. You challenge. say that with a lot of pride. I say it with a yes. lot of yes. pride. So I mean, it's just kind of it's just kind of goes hand in hand. Just chilling, having a beer, See, and we're it we're anti chug. <laughs> we're anti chug, we yes. and we're actually and as you mentioned, you mentioned a, a, you know like ABC and that. These are our Facebook local Atlanta Facebook groups for craft beer, and it's just a little thing they do on there, little chug videos. We're we're gonna start a hashtag sip life, <laughs> and it's gonna be about drinking slow and enjoying your beer. It's an it's an anti chug video PSA. There you go. Is what that's all about. <laughs> and we've we challenged the ABC community to a street fight Anchorman style. <laughs> so whenever they're ready, they can come on out, and we'll take care of that. I so. call Trident. Uh, okay. I was going to get the try it out, yes. but that's okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. We're talking to Pontoon Brewing. Uh, Sean O'Keefe is here along with Cole Brown, the brewmaster of Pontoon Brewing here in Sandy Springs. You, Your mascot is an otter. Correct. And it's like otters everywhere, all everywhere. over the place. <laughs> so why why otters? Um, so why I otter? Sorry, why, that's why, a terrible Hey, idea. hey, no, otter pun yes. all day long. I yes. love it. Go for the otter pun. you got to keep okay. me off Facebook and, and social media because I'll do otter pun all day long. Um, no, otters, I mean, it's like a pontoon boat. You know, my, or the way I think about a pontoon boat is you never get a pontoon boat to show off or to go fast. It's, you know, it's a moving party platform. Otter's the same thing. You never see them working. You never see them... I mean, they are constantly playing. They play with their food. They they roll around. They have fun. We had an otter here at our grand yes, opening. Yes, you did. Yes, and he was just playing around the entire time, playing with his food, trying to get out of the you know the, the kennel on when he was on the leash, just just going up to people. I mean, it was hilarious, and it's just that fun vibe that we want to convey, and uh, it's fun. Now, according to your mu- your mural here, <laughs> yeah, otters hatch from moon eggs that ride on the back of the turtles. Are you sure that's Fact. scientifically Science. accurate? Fact. That is okay. Fact. All right, there you go. So, and and what really amazed me about this is three to a, three to an egg. Correct. Correct. Okay. Correct. Once again, all right. Back. See, you know, I'm learning things here today, Sean, <laughs> which is good, man. Come We're a scientific here, show. So. So that's, Absolutely. That's, what we do. that's it. That's it. That's fact. You can get uh, David Attenborough to verify that. I for think you, we could. So, we'll, yeah. we'll give him a call. See what's and going if not, on. We'll, we'll throw him a couple beers to make. And then it then be like, yeah, go. good enough. That works. Yes. So now, speaking of uh, a chug life, uh, you guys are the sponsor of a rugby team. So I got I to give a shout out to to Atlanta yeah. Old White, uh, my old rugby team, two knees and about fifty pounds ago. Uh, <laughs> but uh, how did that come about? How did you guys uh, decide to do that? So uh, two of the other partners, Eddie and Eric, uh, just knew one of one of the guys over at uh, Old White, and they um, they just they loved our beer. They loved the the environment of the the fun, um, you know, easy approachable beer styles. And uh, we go out there, we cheer them on. I was out there on the 27th when they were playing Clemson. Um, and it, it's just a fun group of dudes that can really put down some beer. It's kind of scary. Yes, they can. If yeah. so anybody could beat me in a chug contest, it would be One of those guys? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So they're a great group of guys, and they, they put down a lot of beer. 
And uh, so we're actually going to probably make a beer for them, which I'm excited about. That's cool. Okay. Yeah. I like that. Now, um, you guys have a uh, new, new space. Like you said, you just finished off this new space a couple of weeks ago and uh, opened it up to the public. What are your plans for it? Uh, for private events here, doing special events, those types of things. Uh, what do you guys look at? I mean, it's a lot of space, uh, as you can see here. Correct. Yeah, we wanted to have, once uh, SB85 passed, uh, we actually changed our architecture plans to make the tap room bigger. Uh, originally, I think it was, what, like 199 or it was it was a much smaller number capacity inside. And uh, we decided to make it bigger and kind of go for the SB85, getting good traffic in here and having large events. Um, so I also come from an event background, working with the National right. Predators yep. up in Tennessee mm -hmm. and um, you know, worked on stuff like the CMA Awards and whatnot. And I, I love throwing on events and we, um, we've had a, quite a few events already come through here, uh, doing some weddings. We're talking to Pontoon Brewing in Sandy Springs, Georgia. We need to take a quick break, but we'll be back right after this. We are Reformation Brewery, celebrating the reformer in you. Locally crafted within the renowned Etowah watershed of Woodstock, Georgia, Reformation creates yeast-forward brews full of aroma and flavor crafted to last. Come see us in beautiful Woodstock, Georgia, for a tour and tasting of unique brews that you can't find anywhere else. Reformation Brewery, set beer free. ReformationBrewery.com Saren and Tim, the beer guys. If you're like us, no lunch or dinner is complete without a pint or two of craft beer. Which is why Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock and Alpharetta are always on our list. Tim, why do they call it Truck and Tap? Well, the tap part is easy, Aaron. See, they've got 18 of them. As for the truck part, well, that's when it gets interesting. Truck and Tap features your favorite Atlanta area food trucks daily, so that way you're getting a different menu every day. Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock, Alpharetta, and coming soon to Duluth in 2018. Truckandtap.com. Let them know that the beer guys sent you. Follow the Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. Now, back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. And welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. Join us on the socials, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Beer Guys Radio. We are live at Pontoon Brewing in Sandy Springs, and Aaron is sitting in a chair. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, between the breaks, uh, I had a little bit of a chair mishap, a chair malfunction, a as malfunction. it would be. What was the wardrobe malfunction? You had the a wardrobe. It was not Janet Jackson. It wasn't, it wasn't nearly as beautiful yes. as that, but uh, <laughs> you know that was basically me on my bus. So that was great. That's okay. It you know, I survived, and like I said, I got a lot of cushion back there, so there you go. Quite <laughs> fine. Anyway, um, yeah. Again, guys, thanks again for joining us uh, today. Uh, one of the beers we drank, we just talked about it earlier in the show, is your Don't Haze Me Bro. <laughs> By the way, your, your promos that online have been really cool. You got the 8 bit uh, otter back and forth. That, that was really awesome, by the way. Yeah. I really like that. Yeah, our social media marketing coordinator, she's, she's awesome. She's back over there working already on, on some more uh, animations for some future posts and whatnot. So Very cool. I love it. Yeah. Oh. That's good stuff. Yeah, the animations. Uh, that always draws draws me in it's <laughs> yeah. cool and i'm like how'd they do that i need to find out what they oh, did that with yeah so, you couldn't ask me i wouldn't there, know so. <laughs> there you go. well I'll tell you what let's talk more about your beers and your brewing so cole tell us about your brew house here what, what kind of system you brewing on um well it's a tiantai system so it's actually one that we uh designed in china i spent about a year okay um working out all the plumbing and everything like that but it's fully touchscreen pneumatic it's very shiny actually for um, okay. Shiny is good. Nice, shiny stainless there, right? Yeah, it's yeah. surprising. It's, it's okay. Yeah, we actually we went over to China. Uh, we went to China in July to inspect it. Um, you know, you hear the, sto the horror stories about Chinese quality. And uh, so we went over, got to really get our hands on it, went inside a couple tanks. Uh, <laughs> Walking yeah. around some tanks, yeah. just uh, hanging out, yes. Yeah, so it was, it was, it was really cool. Um, and, you know, we, we looked at the welds, uh, made sure, you know, all the pumps. Uh, the pumps are impressive. I think Cole can, uh, yeah, we, we, okay. yeah we, we, can, uh, we can really move some liquid and, 
and some other materials. Uh, you know, even that screw pump can can move uh, grain yeah. back and forth from it's the mash to water. Four vessel um, system. So, and we've got a screw pump, so I can do decoction mashes. Okay, and, very cool. Uh, virtually any style of beer. All right. Have you done any of that yet? You played around uh, with decoction? Not yet. I have some uh, loggers on the horizon, though. Okay. Very so. cool. Awesome. Now we talked about your don't haze me, bro, and we gave kind of a little overview of some of your other beers, but. What's your core lineup here, guys? Well, um, so for our spring, um, we, I mean, the the term core, I mean, it's it's kind of, you know, especially with SB85, like, you know, we want to throw it out in the market and see what it does. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would say our staple is really Galaxy Drifter. Okay. Uh, Galaxy Drifter, American IPA. Uh, it's got a buttload of uh, Galaxy and Citra hops in it. Uh, it rides more of the West Coast style. And you get some pine, some resin in it, but it's, you know, also very fruity. Uh, got some juice to it. Uh, it's clear as day, though, so it is not a haze haze craze. No haze, no uh, haze. You okay. can see right through it. Um, and, uh, and our flotation device as well is farm to table, so the ingredients constantly change in it. Our fall one was cranberry tangerines and fall spices. Uh, we have a flotation device with uh, Moscow mule ingredients I in it. I saw that. Fresh ginger and lime juice, and that's going to be out on the seventh of February. Is is that one sampling ready yet? Uh, still in the FE. Oh yeah. man, that's too bad. That's too bad. Okay. Now, now you've mentioned SB eighty five a couple of times uh, here in the show. How has the new laws here in Georgia kind of helped brewers uh, as far as giving them the flexibility to try new things? Absolutely. Um, I, I think you know you, you get customers that that wish that you were back to the old system, but the problem is the behind the scenes. It's the fact that with the new law, we're able to do more fun and unique styles. We're able to do different variants. Um, We're allowed to have dynamic pricing where we can actually charge a price based on what's in the beer. Um, And so that allows us to funnel more money and to do more fun styles. I mean, you look at Red Brick right now with their whale variants. I mean, they're putting out different variants of of that beer all the time. Um, And you didn't see that before. And a lot of it was because you didn't have any flexibility. Um, and so that really allows the tap room to shine and for you to do small batches. So with that, the ability to do small batches and do your direct, you know, your own premise sales and such, definitely a benefit to say a year ago, you know, Georgia Brewers under the laws of old or whatever. But with the, inc- with the changing laws, we have seen continued growth here. There's more breweries. There's several more on the horizon there. So there's... Um, uh, you know, scattering for shelf space, for, you know, mm-hmm. scattering for people's dollars and that. So what can a brewery do today to kind of set themselves apart from that? Well, I hate to say it as a brewmaster, but you consume with your eyes first. So I think that attractive packaging is extremely important for that. Simple packaging that stands out far away. And then just appetizing styles, I think. That's like our mule and things like that. It's a sound drink by itself, so it makes sense right. that it's a beer. So I, I lean towards sensible or food-inspired beers and then good, good labeling. So. Awesome. Well, I, well, I think it's, it's, a, it's, it's a matter of both, really, because like you said, your eyes kind of draw you into the label and the really cool thing and try it out. But if the beer's not good, yep. you're not going to drink it again. Exactly. So you need to kind of have the combination of both of them. Correct. And I still think there's a ton of growth left in Georgia. I mean, we still per capita had, do not have enough breweries in there. And so, you know, the shelf space that we're talking about, I mean, you're going to see a lot of restaurants open up. You're going to see a lot more restaurants. More and yeah, more shelves are going to come up because they're going to realize the demand for it. So I think, you know, we're in a good uh, time in, in Georgia beer and, and we're going to see a lot of new breweries come in. We're excited about that. So what do you think with that climate, the growth and that, what do you think the biggest challenge you face right now is? Well, it's a double-edged sword. Uh, there are a lot of breweries coming in, and it's exciting. We, we talked with 23 breweries right. uh, before we opened up, and so you know we're going to pass it on and, and, and help the, the new guys coming in. But eventually there is a point where it gets crowded, the market gets crowded. Sure. And, um, and I think distinguishing yourself, having a story, having something that's relatable. Um, or another one of those Anchorman fights. Correct. Could take care of some things there, Absolutely. too. So, yes. You know, getting some good press or bad press, you know, as uh, we've seen from Don't Haze Me, Bro. Yes. Uh, you yeah. know, I started a little bit of a controversy there, and uh, surprisingly enough, people have flocked to it on, on Reddit and things sure. like that. And, and, and for those that didn't didn't see it or aren't on the forums, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, no idea. <laughs> Sean shared the label and the beer in the beer release on an online forum, local place we use here, uh, our uh, Reddit ATL beer. Yep. And uh, someone didn't care for the fact that he was kind of mocking that situation. So um, they didn't think it was funny to mock police brutality. 
And uh, they also thought, mistakenly, that the the animal in there was a monkey and that it was racially offensive. So, you know, it was clarified, and I believe things were calmed down there, but uh, oh, yeah. it started a kerfuffle there. It, it did. did. It so. did. And, I, and, I, and so I was at University of Florida right. when that happened. So I can tell you right now, like, if any, like, if a group of people can use that, it would be the people that were there because it was very embarrassing at the time. I had a lot of friends at, at Florida State University, and yeah. they just tore into us. But, of course, and if they're from FSU, they're going to have any excuse to get pick on you, University of Florida guys, Correct. right? Correct. Yes. So yeah. They were trying to find a needle in a haystack. And we actually decided that we would uh, – I think we decided that you would lie and say you were actually the Taysy yes. for marketing yeah. purposes, yes. right? Yes. yes. So that is me. I was the Taysy. Um, yeah. You know, asterisk, but, you know. Asterisk. Yeah. See below. Yeah. Please <laughs> read the fine print. Absolutely. <laughs> now, yeah, so, um, you know – you talk about, again, some of the changes, challenges of the current climate, but in a lot of the opportunities as well. What are some of the things that uh, that you guys are doing to kind of separate yourselves from the pack, make yourselves unique? Well, I think a lot of it, it's coal. Um, coal is, uh, you know, we are very happy and very, I mean, blessed. I don't know what else the word is to have him on our, uh, as our brewmaster. Uh, he's very creative and constantly coming. Like you said, he's a foodie. So a lot of the beers right. that we're putting out are kind of food inspired, but they're not overly like sweet or overly, um, you know, they, they're still approachable. Yeah, I believe um, in simplicity as well. Yes. It's not, you know, okay. Stuff. Correct. Um, I also think our cast game is pretty. Uh, yeah, I, that's something we. That's that's why I wish we were in the ACAT because I think we could have. Yeah. Uh, I think we could have thrown some weight around there. Um, you know, we, we we do some fun casks, and once again, it's all food inspired, uh, cocktail mm-hmm. inspired. You did. Uh, was it Manhattan or old fashioned that you did here? Old, old fashioned. Old fashioned mm-hmm. Samoa nut cookie, uh, mint julep. Um, all, all sorts of fun casks. Okay. So, yeah. yeah, they're yeah. fun. They're, they're, they're a fun part of owning a brewery is, is coming up with casks. Awesome. You're listening to Beer Guys Radio. We're talking to Pontoon Brewing in Sandy Springs, Georgia. We need to take a quick break, but we'll be back right after this. Time for the hot list. The beer guys have the scoop on what's going on next week. Brought to you by CRL Contracting. We build breweries. CRLcontracting.com. That's hot. There's all kinds of great events going on across Georgia this week. Tomorrow, Sunday, there's a big game, a big football game. A lot of Georgia's breweries are going to be having watch parties, breweries and beer bars. I know Monday Night's Garage, Dry County Brewing, Georgia Beer Garden, New Realm, more. Cole, I believe you guys are going to be watching the big game on Sunday here, right? Yep, we are. So come out to Pontoon and check it out. On Monday, it is the 5th of the month, which means it is Cinco de Siberius at Wrecking Bar. You can get their Mexican Siberius Maximus starting at 7 p.m. Get there early because it goes fast. On Wednesday, we have team trivia at Your Pie Perimeter, and we got some tacos and trivia up at Reformation in Woodstock. On Thursday, we have the Chicks Get Lit, the Chicks Guide to Beer, they are meeting at Second Self Beer Company. It's uh, ladies that enjoy craft beer, and they're going to hear from the lady brewer, the chick brewer, as they said, at Second Self. is going to talk. She calls herself t- that, though, That's right. right. Okay, she, that wasn't okay. me. Okay, that wasn't good. me. All That's right. the way they put in their event posting. So check it out uh, with other ladies that enjoy craft beer there. So on Friday, we have uh, the kickoff of the Gate City's third anniversary weekend up there in Roswell. They've got some beers that are releasing, special cans that they're putting on, checking out. Friday is also National Pizza Day. Southern Brewing Company over in Athens is going to be celebrating there. Next Saturday, we have Oconee Brewing Company is releasing Stratus Beer. Very cool story behind this beer. They sent some hops into space and then brewed a beer with it. So super limited run on that one. Only 75 pints available, so get there and check it out. And also Arches Brewing is releasing Mystic Box. So for a full list of Georgia beer events, visit BeerGuysRadio.com and check out our calendar of events. Follow the Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I meant to do that. Now, back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. And welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. BeerGuysRadio.com is our website. We are live at Pontoon Brewing Company in Sandy Springs talking to Sean O'Keefe 
and Cole Brown from the Brewmasters, again from uh, Pontoon, and Sean is the CEO slash co-owner, having some beers, and we've uh, we've changed it up a little bit, Sean. You and I are having a bromosa. Yeah. It's a bromos bro moment, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what that it's goes. Bro out. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Your hat's on backwards. I don't have a hat though, so I guess I can't. Uh, I can't uh, be a total bro. I get but the that's feeling right. you're a proud. You're proudly a bro. Oh, Am 100%. I right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Chug. Afraid. Chug videos and backwards hats. Let's bro it out, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, Bromosis. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I, uh, I actually, I want, we had a beer Olympics at Florida, uh -huh. and my fraternity was in it. Shocking. And, they, would, uh, they would do that in Florida. Sorry. I, anyway. Oh, no, no. It's, it, you're, yeah. It, it, it's, uh, you almost, it's almost in, like, your entry exam. It's, like, a yeah. side piece of paper that they give. It's, like, okay, what can you really do, though? Right. Uh, and, I, and I had the, I won the pitcher chug contest, the dizzy bats, and the shotgun. Okay. Um, it's unfortunate that those kind of events <laughs> at a brewery would probably be frowned upon, yeah, wouldn't they? Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, that's weekender stuff there. Exactly. That's yeah, in yeah. the backyard. That's, so. Yeah, that's my personal. That's you know, when you got your shades on and your bottoms up, man. Yeah. That's what you're doing. <laughs> those that, are definitely right? ethics Absolutely. violations. Yes. That's all I know yes. about that. That's so. it. So, so yeah, so... Um, you know, you guys, again, like you said, uh, you're here in the neighborhood of Sandy Springs, one of the first ones, uh, or the first one here in Sandy Springs. Um, do you guys want to be a neighborhood brewery, or do you guys want to expand and, and be more regional, or, or what are your, your long-term goals here? I mean, we want this to be the neighborhood brewery. Um, you know, our size capacity is about 10,000 barrels in, in, in uh, our brew house area, and um, we were actually already looking at a, um, a production facility uh, in Georgia, um, in the event that we do want to expand. This okay. one's going to be the big tap room, uh, for events and, and in-house stuff and lots of like fun stuff. I mean, that's, that's what this one's about. Mm -hmm. uh, but, I mean, sure, we'd love to expand. But for now, I mean, we're focused in Georgia and focused on, on Sandy Springs, Dunwoody perimeter area. Right. And Roswell. We're basically in Roswell. Yeah, that's. I didn't realize how close you were to Roswell. You know, until, until coming down here. There's a couple other. We actually saw uh, Pat from yep. uh, from Gate City was in the tap room earlier, just a few miles yep. up the road from here. Yep. So Matt and Lauren from Variant Lauren. come down Barrett. here every once yep. in a while, yep. and uh, I was uh, talking to Tim at uh, at from, from the, the Earth. Earth. Correct. Yep. yep. Uh, we're we're trying to nudge him to get some uh, some of our sour on. Put on. it on tap. Absolutely. Right? Okay. So, uh, cool. Yeah. yeah, but it's interesting though when we talk about expansion. I think it's almost a double-edged sword these days. You know, you talk about uh, expanding, and some of the bigger guys, Green Flash, you know, uh, Mendocino, oh, yeah. a lot of these other ones are, are experiencing some some rapid uh, uh, shrinking now that the local local craft beer scene has kind of grown and taken over a lot of their space. So you almost have a catch twenty-two. You want to expand, but you also don't want to get too big for your area. Right? Correct. Yeah, I, I think things are getting hyper localized, and for us, that's good. But sure. for the guys that are trying to get bigger, I mean, it, it really, it's it's cutting into their margins. And you've seen some really big breweries take some hits and kind of retract on some distribution. And yeah. uh, it's sad. And, uh, you know, it's part of that bubble kind of, that growth slowing. Sure. I think everybody's probably feeling that a little bit. You know, we've seen some what I'd call kind of the mid-sized local brewers that are feeling it a little bit. You know, it's, uh, it's getting harder to get a tap handle out Correct. there. You know, mm -hmm. when you've got something, there, there's already... You know, dedicated folks, you know, certain beers rotating on those tap handles. It's tough to get. So the guys that are, you know, established, they're going to feel it. Maybe not maybe not as much as, you know, you've got the big boys, the Green Flashes, the the Sam Adamses, the Stones and that, that are these big, you know, nationwide brewers. You had Stone that built out the new facility. They did the, you know, the, state, the facility in Germany. And uh, I just, I'm just not sure how much more market there is there for, national or international type of breweries you know so i think people are going away from it i think, yeah, sure. I think customers are starting to realize that the real like real ingredients real like the farm to table mentality i think that comes from hyper local i mean mm -hmm. we're we're going out to decab farmer's market and loading up 180 pounds of ginger and slicing it cole you know cut his hand doing it i mean like it's you know <laughs> so, yeah uh, right that I mean, mandolin will get you every time yeah, be careful. It was, it was. Uh, i've done that before i yeah. have too yeah we got some cut cut proof gloves uh but i mean it's that kind of the blood sweat and tears literally um that you know people really appreciate they, mm -hmm. they kind of have that attachment to and it's hard to get that with a regional especially sure. a national i think support. there is opportunity internationally though if you were to go that far because yeah. we are we are the french wine of ipas you know like, yeah we're the best ipas yeah. go to uh i know italy is growing uh the asian markets oh, are, yeah. are you know i know uh about said north Red korea i don't think it's north well, korea that's well, there's probably a huge market yeah, in north korea so, but you yeah. may not get in there uh, yeah. or you may not get out <laughs> if you go in first that's yeah. the problem but south korea you know things yeah. are going on there chinese consumers are 
you know, buying more and more of those kinds and, and of I, things. And I've said this before, yeah. too. It's, it's interesting. You know, we're going on our third year of this show, and when we first started, you know, we, we, you would see the hype, and, and people would go stand in lines for some of these big national beers, uh, you know, Founders KBS or, yeah. or Goose Island's, uh, you know, the Stouts and those types of things. Nowadays, you can get that similar style of beer from about 10 different local breweries. And right. so a lot, of that, a lot of that demand has kind of been sated by, by the local people. Honestly, I'll say it, better. I'd rather have a fresh beer than a yep. light beer. Bingo. Sure. That's 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 the thing is, you know, as soon as you go from a bright tank into packaging, you're you're putting in this beautiful beer into this awful packaging. And so shipping it and, and dealing with all that, like why not get it from your backyard? Well that's we're right in the middle of a very hyped beer release right now you know so we're uh, bell's hop slam which mm. for many years it's uh, i personally don't care for the beer it's it's not my style of beer it's very but uh, i know brian it. brian is a do you are you a high i'm not a, a huge fan, fan, fan of it I, I will drink it but i know brian is much bigger yeah. fan than i am so but it's one that even with the markets you know there being so much more stuff local it's one that people do stand in line for they search for they go out for and that but it's it's getting to be much and much less you know and, right. and some of these that were super hype releases in the past, you're finding them on the shelf two months later, three months later, when at one point you wouldn't have found them on the shelf two minutes after they released. Yeah. So it's yeah. just a... Uh, I work for a distributor, so I kind of uh, lost respect for the shelf. Saw There's, that, You yeah. see pallets of KBS, and you're like, oh, okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, I, I, I can get There's that. There's tons of it in so, the world. Don't yeah. worry about it too much. Well, that, I, an example there, Cascade, uh, the Cascade Sours. Yep, I can remember that. having people... You know, go out to Oregon. I'm like, dude, please grab me some Cascade while you're out there. I, I ordered them online. You know, I do that, and uh, now they're here on the shelf. I'll walk by them. I'm like, eh, eh I don't know, thirty dollars, yeah, right? Thirty dollars. So, people. and I can get stuff from a Georgia brewery. That's Cascade's great. Don't get me wrong. I yeah. absolutely love the beers, but I can get stuff at a lower price that's close, at yeah. least, or you know, equally as good. So, um, yeah, you're seeing a lot of you're it's seeing no a, yeah. right? Exactly, <laughs> it's, it's close yeah. there. Sure, but yeah. you're seeing you're seeing some really cool barrel programs pop up in Georgia. I saw Monday nights coming up with the uh, Wild Cherry Wild, right? Um, Exgolator. X X. Echolator, actually, Echolator. Okay, so, uh, very, you know, looks that looks really cool. I mean, you're seeing a couple other programs like do some like real barrel programs, not just sure. throwing stuff in a barrel and hoping it works. Like true blending. I believe uh, when I kind of made a side appearance on on Beer Guys Radio before, we right. were talking with the blending master over at Cascade, and that yes. just the fact that they have a blending master right. is just yeah. so cool. Yeah. Um, and, and a lot more folks are trying to do it uh, and cultivate wild geese and wild strains from here in Atlanta. I know Orpheus Jason is in a lot of that stuff as well. Correct. You know, so so you know you're starting to get that local, um, uh, even not only just the local farm to the table ingredients in the beer, but the actual geese and the actual cultures are are going to be locally here. So it's all going to be different. All going to be just again hyper local, which is really awesome. And like Duh. wines, yeah. You know, it's it's vintages. So yeah. vintage the uh, terroir and vintages and all that good stuff. Yeah, so, terroir. so do you guys have aspirations to uh, to put some funky barrels up and, and blend them and do all this madness? We were just we were talking yeah. about yeah. it last yeah. night. Okay. Nice barrels, Flanders Reds, number one. For Very me. cool. Oh, yeah. there you go. Nice. That's that's yes. what you're talking. Excellent. Well, cool. We got to wrap up this conversation though. Again, thanks guys for joining us today. Thanks for uh, having us and uh, enjoying your beers. If folks want to get a hold of you or keep in touch with what's going on with Pontoon, how should they, how should they do that? Um, they can contact uh, our website now has. A, a contact feature that goes directly to us. Um, uh, our, it's super, super uh, hard. Uh, it's our first names at pontoonbrewing.com. So Sean at pontoonbrewing.com and Cole at pontoonbrewing.com. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of ways to so reach us Facebook, Twitter, um, Instagram, MySpace. All the socials, yes. right? All MySpace. The socials. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, MySpace. Hey, yes. yeah, Alta well, Vista. Club Penguin. Yeah. So, yeah. yes. Well, cool. Thanks again, guys. We appreciate it. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Thank you for coming out. Definitely. And now it is time, Tim, for a giveaway to give away. Our winner this week, Aaron, is Thomas Kramer. Thomas, thank you so much for subscribing to This Week in Georgia Beer. If you will drop us an email to beerguys at beerguysradio.com, we're going to get you very cool swag packs sent out. And, Aaron, if others want to join in this fun, get the scoop, and be entered to win prizes, how would they do that? Super easy, Tim. Just head to BeerGuysRadio.com. Sign up for This Week in Georgia Beer. It's right there on the left, or if you scroll down on your mobile, uh, you'll have the form there as well. You get a weekly newsletter with all the happenings in Georgia Beer. You'll also be entered to win our weekly swag pack, which is pretty awesome. Speaking of awesome, by the way, I'm never a huge Shandy fan. Yes. This is it's really, really good, really isn't it? Good. It's extremely good. It's yes. tasty. It's <laughs> 
this is this is the stuff here. So uh, I, again, I would endorse this wholeheartedly. Coming up next, though, we're going to be right down the street actually next week talking with Variant Brewing Company. Nice. So uh, yeah, so uh, Matt and Laura are going to be with us on the show. It'll be a good time. Check us out at BeerGuysRadio.com and on the socials. And don't forget to drink local. We'll talk to you next time. Cheers.